Where did you guys start before the program? Starting at zero when we started the course. What was the plan you guys had in mind? The plan was just for Sita to have her own business and replace her salary. When I started e-commerce, I quit two weeks ago with my uh, customer support. I just fully focus on this. And then Corona hit and we didn't have any shows anymore and I was making no money. How was the first weeks or months? I believe in every space, everything you do, you need to be the like top 1%, even less than that, like if you want to be successful. So when we got into the new market, in our first week we had our winning product. For some people it could sound like, oh, they got lucky, they got a winning product, but we already tested over 100 products in the month before. Unbelievable. How fast you guys scaled, honestly. So we're not gonna be comfortable just because we're making 10K, because that can like go down really fast. I don't care about making 10 or 20,000 this month if next month it's gonna be nothing. Yeah. Where we wanna head, like we wanna build something sustainable. What's up, my beautiful people? You're here for another new powerful interview. This one will be with Geert and Zita. Amazing what they've been able to achieve in this program. They started from complete zero, the complete ground. Matter of fact, Zita, she was working as a customer service employee, completely hating life. She was like, I need to change my life. Geert recommended her to join my program. What happened? She started alone later down the line. Geert decided to come along and they've been just crushing it, man. At the moment, I think they've already passed 30K in a day. Started from zero, bro. Unbelievable, they're joining the mastermind right now. Anyway, enjoy this interview, ciao. All right, guys, welcome to this interview with Geert and Zita. So this is actually uh, take number two. We had another one, but we had some uh, inconveniences, so we're doing it again. So yeah, excited for uh, yeah for this interview because I know these guys are uh, yeah doing good numbers and started from uh, from zero with us. So uh, yeah, Zita, can you introduce yourself and to hear it afterwards? Yes. Uh, so I'm Zita. I'm 24 years old. Um, I'm from Belgium, and um, I graduated in September. I have a bachelor of communication, but I couldn't find anything uh, within that degree. So. Um, I was unemployed for three months after September, and then I started as customer service agent, and I totally hated that job. And then, um, yeah, he has introduced me to this program, and um, we enrolled in it. So maybe he is gonna say something about himself? Uh, yes, so um, I've been doing business for a while. Uh, I work in the music industry as an artist manager and a label owner. And um, yeah, that's going pretty well. Only at some point, uh, I had a lot of free time, even besides uh, those businesses, uh, and kind of uh, yeah, was looking to to do something more in life. Uh, and uh, a friend of mine uh, showed me that uh, he was doing good numbers in uh, with his e-commerce store. And uh, it motivated me uh, because he was only doing it for like a couple of months and it motivated me to uh, to also want to get into it. And um, but at first I was kind of hesitant and uh, I told Sita about it uh, and really motivated her to 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 start her own business. And um, uh, and then I was just helping her and I really liked it. So uh, eventually, after I think like a week or two. We decided to officially become uh, business partners in this, and uh, and do the course together, and uh, it's, it's been gr going great so far. We had our uh, ups and downs, um, but overall, uh, really happy uh, with our decision to uh, to join the program, and, uh, and yeah, it's been been it's been great. So, for, for uh, people their information, uh, where did you guys uh, start before the program? Uh, did you guys have any past e-com experience or was it really zero um, or maybe you have seen the business model drop shipping here and there yeah we had a website like a year ago but it was really it was really nothing and there was nothing on it um, we only did it for like two days and then we actually gave up <laughs> so um, yeah we actually have like zero um, yeah zero experience in e-commerce And f for you Geert was it the same uh yes yes so as i mentioned before i i, I knew some people I, i've been knowing a couple of guys that were always in e-commerce but kind of like 
not saying much about what they were doing or which which store or which brand like really secretive but um it always showed that there was potential but until that one friend really just showed me his store and and the numbers and everything uh yeah i i, I didn't know much about it i did some research research online but really i think you could call it starting at zero when we started the course so um yeah so what what was um, yeah what was the goal maybe when you guys started uh, with with the course because Geert, you told me in the last call we did that first it was more for Zita because she was maybe a bit uh, stuck so what was the plan you guys had in mind uh, before this yeah yeah so honestly um, I was just happy to help Zita um, um, and as I mentioned before I already have my other businesses that are going well. But um, I was struggling with uh, the free time I had, too much free time on hand that I was uh, getting bored. And um, so I just helped her as a friend. And um, the plan was just for Sita to have some, have her own business and just make enough, like replace her salary of her uh, last job uh, and maybe make a little bit more and have the freedom to, to be her own boss. Um, but that changed really quick for me when I was helping her out. I really enjoyed it. I had like more structure in my day and uh, um, yeah. What did you like about Ecom? Maybe that you uh, don't have in the music business you are running um, because I can imagine it's very different. For me, honestly, the, it was the structure. Um, my, my the music business is like I have contact with my artists during the whole day. I have I, sometimes I have meetings. Like right now, I'm in Germany for a week doing sessions every day. But sometimes I don't have sessions for six months, and um, it was really the lack of structure. And now I get up early, go to the gym. I was already going to the gym, but I get up early, go to the gym, find a place to work, uh, do the ecom. Uh, I talked to Zita about it, um, and it's lot, just a lot more structure, and it's also giving me some more security. Beside, like if you're doing business, you know that um, having all of your income come from one business is could also be stressful in a way where uh, all your eggs are in one basket. And uh, I've seen it before in the music industry. I've experienced it before, where everything went really well, and then Corona hit. And we didn't have any shows anymore when I was still uh, working as a manager in the Netherlands. And I was making no money. And I basically had to go back from driving a nice Tesla and everything to also working a customer service job um, and trying to find a new business to start again. So um, it's really, yeah, just giving me more uh, security, uh, having multiple in, uh, streams of income. And um, and again, it's building something new, like, and it and it really works. That's the thing, like, that's the beautiful. That's when you see it that it works. That's the best feeling in business. Like, you started from nothing, no one believes in it, and then you build something, and again, it works. That's that's the best feeling. I think. I still have that same feeling when I test something new, new store or new product, uh, or if it was for you guys like a new business model. So. Uh, Zita, how was this uh, for you? Because um, yeah, you was doing customer service beforehand, and uh, yeah, you was uh, fed up with that. Yeah, so how was it for you going from a customer service job to uh, now doing ecom? Yeah, to be honest, like I l literally hated my job. Um, I was so depressed in the first week that I started back, and um, after that, yeah, when I started e-commerce. I just like I quit two weeks ago with my uh, customer service job to just fully focus on this, and it just gives you more freedom to like do what you want. You're not you're you don't wake up to like make someone else rich but yourself, so that's also a bonus. Um, and it it also gives me more structure because before that, yeah, I was just going to work. I didn't really. After that, I was just laying in bed and doing nothing, and now I really have a purpose like in life. So that's also like a plus thing for uh so very good so how uh, can you guys uh, talk me through um you uh, joined the program how was the first 
weeks or, or months. Uh, you guys were coached by uh, Adam. Both of you were new in the space. So how did uh, that go? It was, uh, we first started off uh, in a different market than where we're now. So we started off in the Netherlands and Belgium and we were really struggling. Um, like test, we were testing every day. And I think at one point we, we, we'd already tested over a hundred products. And then um, we were like, kind of like having break even numbers, um, maybe a little loss, but um, yeah, we just, uh, we kept testing, kept listening to, to uh, Adam and, um, and um eventually uh the chinese new year happened so we were still kind of like is this gonna work or is it not gonna work but we were like okay we're not gonna give up because from the beginning we wanted to be like the top students um because i believe in every space everything you do you need to be the top percent like top one percent even less than that like if you want to be successful it's in music football players business you got to be the best so we wanted to be the best students so that we could be like the success story. And um, after, uh, during Chinese New Year, we basically made a whole new website, went to a different market um, after getting advice from uh, Adam. And um, and then like the first week we, we got a winning product. And for some people it could sound like, oh, they got lucky, they got a winning product, but, and they just went to a new market, but we already tested over a hundred products in the month before. Mm. So it's not that the first product just hit. Like I, I believe that if we would have continued in the Netherlands, we could also have gotten a winning product. Uh, it was just coincidence that we went to a different market and then we got the winning product. But, um, and then everything went really fast. Like we just followed everything, like uh, the scaling rules and, uh, um, and, and we kept testing uh, different products as well because one product was really doing well, but then we really, we felt like uh, we were happy, but we also were like, we needed a second winning product and a third winning product. Otherwise this is not sustainable long-term. And um, yeah, we just kept implementing the strategy and, and that's how we eventually got to the- Was it for you guys, the, the market change that made the big impact or was there alongside that also some different changes you guys maybe did in the products you tested, how you uh, at the store structured or was that still all the same? Um, I think we did some minor tweaks to the website. I think like Belgium and the Netherlands, it's more like oversaturated. I don't think anything was wrong with the strategy we were doing before. I just believe like sometimes you got to test a hundred products to find a winning product. And sometimes you find 10 winning products in, in a hundred products, mm. but you just got to be consistent and just follow the advice you get. And, and obviously I do think the, the market change made a difference and we would have never done that at that point. If, if our coach didn't tell us to, um, so I think it's just a combination of just being consistent and just following all the steps. Like, um, at some point you can just be like, ah, I'm not going to test anymore or I'm going to test less or mm -hmm. I'm going to put more money into this product just by going off a of feeling. But we just kept to the strategy and, and the guidelines you guys gave us um, for how to do the things. And I think that eventually it's just a, a formula to success then if you just keep stick to it. So you you guys joined the program in it was it the beginning of uh, January or the end of uh, December? The end uh, of December. December yeah. And and then um, the the one hundred products you guys tested that didn't work out. Um, when was the the moment that it changed? It was Chinese New Year, right? Well, after Chinese New Year. After Chinese New Year, yes. When we got into the new market in our first week, we had our winning product. So can you? Uh, talk about those uh, first week maybe in the new market how were the the numbers building up what was also your guys strategy when it comes to the creative testing or and how you had uh, the ads maybe sita could elaborate yes so um as i already said so in our first week we had our winning product um and then after that like you don't have to be satisfied with having that winning product you just keep on testing uh five new products but with the scaling, we always had like ROAS between um, or above three. 
So we could also always like scale um, very fast. And that's why we got from, yeah, let's say zero to 24K actually in one month. So, um, and what did we do too? Yeah, we did bid caps and uh, CBO campaigns too, but it was mostly uh, based on um, ABO campaigns. So yeah. And did you guys scale every every 48 hours or um, yes, how did you guys so, scale it? Yes. So every 48 hours, we uh, looked at the ROAS of the past um, 48 hours. And if they were above three, we would always double it. Um, but if you go like above an ad spend of 1,000 per day, it's not that um, smart to double that. So um, after 1,000, we just go up 200, 200, 200 until we actually got to, um, to this level. So, uh, uh, Geert, how did you both uh, divide the roles? Because uh, it's the two of you. Is one more uh, front end and uh, one more back end, or how was that looking? So, I'm I'm more of the product research. That's that's mostly what I do. I do um, also just everything with the website, um, and Sita um, um, focuses mostly on on the campaigns. So, um, yeah, that's, that's like the main, uh, division of, of the roles that we, we have, but, um, also depends on what's needed. Like in the beginning, Sita was also doing customer service, but it took a lot of time. So then, uh, our coach told us like, you, know, you need to, um, to get someone to do this because it's just taking up too much time, uh, and, and you cannot focus on the business. At what point you started hiring? Was it at uh, like 3K, 4K a day or uh, sooner, later? I, I think we were pretty late because the advice was to do it already at like, I think at when we were hitting like a couple of K a day. But then because it went so fast, we still didn't hire people. And because it's the two of us, we still had some extra time. But um, I think at around like, Sita, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think at like, between five and 10K days, that's when we, and I'm talking you uh, Australian dollars then. Yeah. That's when we uh, started hiring um, someone. Uh, uh, for the, the first, service and yeah, for customer service, yeah. So walk, walk me through, uh, through uh, the, the next weeks because you guys went on and uh, keep, keep scaling. Was it like gradually, was it more ups and downs or how did it come along? Because also, uh, uh, Geert, I met you at the, at the gym, in front of the gym, when you were at around 3K a day, 4K yeah. a day. Yeah, between 3 and 4K. Yeah. I, I said, let's go to 10K a day, but back then you uh, you were still a bit on edge. I, yeah, I told you. I, I, I remember that I said, uh, let's first hit 100K a month. Um, <laughs> but you was already there, basically, if you, it's 3K a day. Yeah, but because we were at... I wasn't convinced yet, or yeah. I still hadn't experienced it for a longer period of time. So it was like the first couple of days that it was doing those type of numbers, but then it kept going up eventually. And I was just before this call looking with Sita that since we started, we did almost 300,000 euros uh, in this course. Um, so uh, almost half a million uh, Australian dollars. And... Um, yeah, so I think when the video, uh, when you uploaded the video on your YouTube channel, it wasn't it wasn't relevant anymore. The numbers that we were doing, like we were already at, at like I don't know, fifteen k or maybe higher even. Um, and then last Sunday, um, we hit twenty four k, and that was or Saturday, Saturday or Sunday, and that was basically the last day of the of the course. Uh, for us, uh, at least of this part of the course, because as we discussed, we're thinking about joining uh, the mastermind to take it to the next level again. Um, Unbelievable how fast you guys scaled, honestly, because Chinese New Year is just, uh, it's not even two months ago. So. No, yeah, it, it was in, in about a month, a little bit over a month. From, from your guys' point of view, what what made uh, the most significant uh, impact? Of course, uh, we shared a strategy. You had Adam as a coach, uh, yeah, who's just on it. Um, but what was 
maybe you've seen the, the biggest differentiator that made you guys skill uh, this quick? I think two things. Um, if you guys tell us do three to five, we will never be on the low end. Like we would never do three. Like we're doing five or more. Like, you know, like if you're telling us do this with your website, we want it to be better than that. I think it's it comes back again to like in the beginning, we told each other we want to be those top students that he's talking about all the time. And now that's ha that that's happened, but it doesn't come for free. It doesn't come easy. Like you always got to like if if um, for example, uh, our coach told us the website needs to be done uh, next week. I would have have it done the same or the next day. Mm. Um, so it's so you got to just uh, and also it comes from the coach as well. Like when it wasn't going well. He was like keeping us uh, or holding us accountable, like asking us and also s send a profit sheet um, every day. Um, just the small things of having a personal coach, like obviously you could just have the videos. and um, But to me, we've watched the videos and that's that. You understand it or you don't understand it. If you don't understand, you watch it again. But then it's the coach keeping you, holding you accountable to... Um, uh, to keep delivering, even if it's not going well, because it's easy to to deliver when everything is going well. It's it's those moments that you're struggling, uh, and he, he he helped us to still believe in, uh, like like you said when I met you, you said uh, 10k days, and I was like ah, but our coach had already told us when we were doing 1k, he was like next week you're you'll be at 5k days, and, and we were like. Then after the call talking, we called each other and we were like, 5K days, like, how is that going to happen? Like, what? <laughs> and then we got there. So, yeah, I um, think especially in the beginning, we were never like, we never thought we would hit those 10K days or thought we would hit those 10K days, but never that fast because mm. it really went from yeah. this. But to get back to your question, so I think it's just for me and then Sita can answer for herself. But for me, it was that our coach held us accountable uh, at all times that also just gave us some guidance to just keep going and and also like giving us perspective that even if it's not going well that you can still that you, we would just have to move forward and keep pushing pushing until we got there and keep testing um, um, and yeah that's I think honestly and I've had this discussion with friends, like if you join this course and you you have a set of brains and you have some time left, it's really hard to fail. Like only I, I sometimes we talk about it, like we don't understand how people fail after three months, like completely. So I'm not talking about doing the same numbers that we're doing. Like I know we're also like, uh, yeah, we we're blessed that that's going this way. But yeah, but I you are. The right one to say it because you did test so many products in in the beginning and it didn't instantly work out right so mm -hmm. exactly yeah and and you can i only think if if at that moment you slow down you're like ah you, you like you have no motivation left yeah then you can fill because then at some point you're like ah and i also think that having to invest money into like a coaching program um like it makes you want to make back the money I don't like losing money, yeah. even if I have money or if I don't have money, I don't like losing it yeah. for no reason. I don't mind investing because right now it's an investment with really good uh, return. Uh, yeah, really good. Uh, what, what's it called? ROI. 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 It's, yes. Yeah, it's, it's been for us, it's been uh, best investment so far. But um, how, how, how is it? Because. Uh, Zita comes from customer service. Uh, you, of course, you ha you have your um, your music uh, managing business. But to go at one point, you're at 10k a day. What was like the 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 mindset? Because you guys are still um, growing in terms of revenue. So is it like okay, we need to keep pushing, building out the team more, uh, start to yeah. understand it more, or some they have like a more lean back mindset, like oh, it's all coming my way. I know exactly what I'm doing. What what is right now the the mentality? No, right now we 
because we talk about it a lot. We're like, no, we're not going to uh, be comfortable just because we're making 10K a day. Uh, we just want to keep testing, keep um, getting our pro optimi optimizing our product. Um, we're also going um, to Spain next week to shoot like our own UGC content. So we're really like want to upgrade. We're not going to be comfortable just because we're making 10K because that can like go down or yeah, go down really fast. Yeah, we just want to build something sustainable and long term. And last time in the Zoom call with you, uh, when we had, we talked for a little bit that where we want to head, like we want to build something sustainable yeah. and long term. Like it's fun. I don't care about making ten or twenty thousand this month if next month it's gonna be nothing. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I'd rather build something really long term and put the money back into the business now and actually build a business. Like that's the key word, business. We're not just drop shipping we're, we're trying to build a business and that's also one of the reasons um we're planning on joining the mastermind is because we we want to take it to that level where we actually could build build out like uh something sustainable what's not so easy to be to be in copy that's it um that's that's the next move for you guys if i was in your shoes build something more sustainable professionalizing what you have uh, now already mm -hmm like a, a good team but you want to differentiate yourself and even go like uh, branded with times because branded is it's not easy to copy and also you can build something that you might be uh, able to exit right mm -hmm. uh, with, it happened with icon all of a sudden i had a brand the this the the gap from what you are doing to a brand that is long term that you can also exit is so much closer than people think but too many dropshippers, they have tunnel vision, so they only look at the dropshippers and they only copy the dropshippers and they don't listen to anything outside. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, that, that can sometimes lead to fatigue or you hitting a plateau, right? I think for you, that's yeah. it's massive. That's, again, it's, it's uh, what, I, what I keep talking about is being, being the best in whatever you do. Like, like if I look at you, you're the top one percent of what you're doing. Like you were the top top one percent dropshipper. Uh, now you're in coaching, doing that. But um, so it's you can be content and make a lot of money dropshipping and have a good life and mm -hmm. just chill, travel, but, whatever. But just realize right now how close you are to that top one percent, right? Because you guys are almost at. 30k uh, a day let's let's call it you go to 33k a day you're at 1 million a month look then 1 million a month you are already in the in in the top with with ecom because then doesn't matter where you go maybe you are in dubai talking with other ecom entrepreneurs you are you 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 have like actual value to share right so it's just a matter of consistency in my opinion it sounds uh, so surreal when you put it like that yeah but it's it's so close. The only uh, thing you have to watch out for is looking a bit too much at the numbers. Look at your own input and look at what you have got going on. Because mm -hmm. sometimes it can also be or come a bit too, too easy. What I mean by that is if you have something that just works and you keep scaling it and you think, okay, this is the end all be all, you stop improving, mm -hmm. then it can happen that maybe you, you, you step back. So... For you guys, I would just look at, uh, okay, um, why are, 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 are things working for, for us right now? Mm -hmm. Why are people buying? What are the products? What are the other competitors in the space that are, are killing it? Because even though you are drop shipping and maybe your store is still a bit more general, there might be big brands that sell those exact products that you guys are now selling. So there's always uh, somewhere you, you, you can improve, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's yeah. a good move. So what you mentioned is really good to uh, also um, go do own shoots, make uh, own UGC content. Yeah, that's really yeah. a tip our coach gave us too, to to uh, get our own um, content. Because yeah, everyone copies in dropshipping, so it's better to do your own thing, to stand out from the crowd. Yeah, and, and also we, for example, like um, our profits went down a little bit. Um, our ROAS went a little bit down um like still good but um and then we were like ah we really need to find that next product and um this product is kind of dying 
And then our coach told us like, no, it's just the creative. Like you can still build yeah. on this co- on this product. It's just the creative that everyone has seen it yet, I've already seen it. And so start doing UGC. And yeah, he advised us to like get some UGC creative, but I already had a trip planned to Spain with my artist and we're renting a villa. So I was like, Zita, come out and let's, uh, let's shoot it ourselves. Um, uh, and just trying to be unique in that way. Um, and we'll still, we'll still have to see like how, how it works. But I think it's those, those small things that can make a difference uh, mm-hmm. standing out from, from what, the crowd. What, what is, uh, lately like the, the past, week or so two weeks what have you guys mostly been uh, been focused on or maybe what are right now some uh, some obstacles or objectives with the with the business Zita? yeah i think we're still like focusing on testing five products a day and uh, making those also scale because i think we have like a few products that are um, doing well but we just keep on searching so we're not like um focused on those products that do work um what we also yeah what we're focused on is on just yeah expanding um and yeah we we also have a few obstacles like we had our record day on sunday and two days later it went a bit yeah it was less so yeah we went from a record day to to really really small profit margins yeah in, in a day span, like, so it, it was really like up and down and we know it's Monday and Tuesday that that's like, you can just statistically see that it's, those are bad days, but it was, um, you, you also have to look at it over a longer time frame, to be honest. So if you look yeah, at it yeah. over a week or a month and then take the, the average profit, then all of a sudden it looks different honestly sometimes people call me crazy but sometimes i go a couple of days i don't check the revenues because i just if it over is over a week and i see that we're on an upward trend profits are good then the days itself sometimes don't um, matter too much and one of the biggest things i've learned when it comes to for example the ads is to try to keep your emotions out of it um, and just in general uh, because yeah, it, it otherwise it it fucks with your mind and it will be a roller coaster. Because definitely, yeah. I can guarantee you if you, uh, for example, I do a month, I do two million. In that month, there are uh, at least uh, f- four days that are a break even or a loss, right? Well, yeah. on those days, many people they would say, "Oh shit, ain't working, scaling down." Uh, yeah. and that's maybe the dropship mentality. And that is what you slowly have to adjust. In the beginning, it's good because yeah, many things make a big impact, uh, especially when you're still in testing phase. But later down the line, just try to expand and expand. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's also some some obstacle, or not an obstacle, but something we struggled with. But sometimes when uh, when we have those days that we keep us pos- we stay positive and not let our emotions take over like ah uh, is it yeah. is it actually working like those thoughts cross your yeah. mind yeah, they cross your and mind you know, we talk about it a lot but then we're like okay we have to stay positive yeah, yeah. and also I, I you guys are exactly in this uh, place right now because i was there when you have your first month or months that you really start to do big numbers you slowly also have that feeling inside of you that you don't want to lose it you know mm-hmm. so if if something goes wrong, you might instantly uh, get paranoid, but you have to learn to deal uh, with that a little bit. Yeah. 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 For sure. Yeah, we do. So what what are right now like the bigger goals? Geert, uh, you have your uh, your music business. Uh, you are doing it uh, this alongside with that. Sita, you are now full time ecom, right? Uh, I mm-hmm. Don't do customer service no more. So. No. Where, where, where do you guys want to go? Because um, I don't know what the goals was in the, before you guys started the program, but I think you guys crushed those uh, completely. So, yeah. yeah. I think in the beginning when we enrolled this course, it was like, oh, 10K days, like that would be crazy, like making 20K profit a month, like, huh? But I think more now, yeah, it's definitely those 1 million months, but also like having our own brand and really build something sustainable that we can like, yeah. like um, work on in 10 years maybe. So 
because I don't think we'll do like drop shipping in 10 years. I think yeah. we would like, yeah, for me, we have our own brand and when, like when we decided that. to really do it together, I, I would have been happy with making a couple of K extra a month. Um, but, um, now I definitely have bigger goal. Um, I really want to, want to have a brand. Um, and, um, yeah, that's, that's like really the, the end goal to like, I just see that the sky is the limit with this, like in terms of how you could scale in ecom, like, uh, and I want, like, I, I, I've always had the mindset that I, I'm, I'm not really, uh, uh, I'm not satisfied really fast with things. Like, um, I always want more and this e is perfect for that. <laughs> you, like you want more, but you can actually create it. Like, honestly, like it's, um, <laughs> if you have the right tools, if the skill set, and, and that's also why yeah. I like, like. Um, you're younger than me, you and your brother, but at, at times, like, I look up to you, not in a jealous way, but I look up to you as in, like, it motivates me. The fact that you guys are waking up early, going to the gym, eating healthy, and, you know, working hard and playing hard. Like, that's that's also, like, I, go, I wake up early, I go to the gym, I work, I do my mo multiple yeah. businesses, and it just motivates me to get more and and, you know, so... You attract it then, because the better you feel about yourself, the more will, will come your way. You know, mm -hmm. if you are just in this overall good winning vibe, then, bro, you see opportunities everywhere. You see winning products where other people, they are like, oh, that's, that's not a winner. That won't work. And you are like, no, that, that should work. Because momentum is so important. That's why the only thing I, I would say to you guys right now is to just stay on it. Because mm -hmm. this is the exact moment where people see the profits. Okay, let's say you do 20K in a day, you make a 4K net, 5K net. People look at that and think, fuck, I, I need to book a holiday, man. And I, need to, I, I, I need to live that life, right? But the biggest mistake I made was putting other things before my business. So um, enjoying, partying, whatever. You should keep... Ecom and and uh, the, yeah. this long term vision as your number one, and then on the, you can enjoy. You do a record day, you go out for dinner, whatever. You can do uh, do the holidays, but always attach something uh, you want to do or buy or whatever to like a goal with with maybe your business, and it doesn't have to be money. Like oh, five hundred k mom, I do this. It can also yeah, be sure. so yeah. many products tested or so many times waking up early, right? So also we haven't yeah. taken out a single euro or dollar out of the business yet. Like with the profits we have, like nothing. Like even the money that we put in ourselves in the beginning to start, yeah. it's still in there. So <laughs> if we would stop now, we would have good profits. But um, we're like, no, we, mm -hmm. we need to keep it in there because we want to grow. Like we don't, this is not enough. Um, and, and again, we... we if you want to build towards a brand and everything, like you, you need that. And one thing you guys, uh, if I can also give another advice on that is um, connect with others who are also doing numbers. And that can be um, uh, when you, when you uh, visit different places or with time you take like a, a trip to network yeah. to a Dubai or, or whatever it is, because that will do so much it's unbelievable everyone i have around me it's it's all ecom and before you know you are in touch with someone who who does also uh let's say a million plus a month and they share you exactly the framework that works for them or how you can save tax or how you need to structure your business it's mm -hmm. it's, it's priceless you know so mm -hmm. may expand your world as well um, with that yeah, I think that's something yeah, that we still I've need already to do uh, connected with a couple of people that I met in the Discord. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, um, I was, again, I like to motivate Zita and I've been motivating her. It's like, let's go on, on trips to just work or let's go to Dubai. Just like, for me, it's enjoyment when I'm going on a trip, still waking up early, doing yeah. my things, going out for dinner. Uh, being in nice places, so um, I'm trying to motivate Sita to to also do more. But again, it's also 
it's our first successful like i would call it our first successful month and we want to sure. like have some, build some consistency and uh uh and then yeah. start doing those things and uh, what i want to 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 end on is Look, you guys went from uh, yeah, literally zero with no past e-com experience to now your biggest day, uh, 24, 4K in a day in just uh, three months. So what would you say to the person who is maybe right now at zero or is stuck or uh, has an e-com store, but it isn't moving? Uh, what advice would you give? Yeah, I would say the cliche thing that no one really wants to hear, but you just need to keep on testing because I know like after the... Um, 50 product 100 200 like you will get demotivated but I think like for everyone there's this one product that will really work and will help you scale up and also like um, if you're doing something over and over and over and over and it's not working yeah. start looking at what you're doing how you're doing it and if you're doing something wrong because it could be that just a small thing is wrong uh, within your website or whatever, whatever you do, like also just be, uh, be hard to yourself. Like, don't be like, like there is a reason it's not working. If it's not working, like there has to be a reason, like, uh, it's not magic. So, um, you may, either you're, yeah. Yeah. Either you're not putting in the work or, or you guys maybe your website is not good. Or, so. Maybe you keep That's testing good. in the wrong niche. Just like you gotta like look at it. Uh, and, and yeah. Really trying to find what's wrong. Um, if because if you test two, three hundred products and you don't have any sales, like zero sales or two sales, like something is wrong and not in the in the products. Yeah, sometimes people say I'm doing everything right, but it's not working. But that doesn't exist, right? That would <laughs> be you... magic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, so how, how was it to end it on this? Um, throughout this this process, also in the beginning and even now, I think, to have uh, a, a coach to fall back on when, for example, you are in doubt. And especially in the beginning, you ain't seeing the, the results, right? So you, you, you also don't know Am I doing it right or not? Or what is it? So how was that to have a coach? For example, Adam, yeah. Yeah, I just, for me, um, it just keeps you motivated because I think if you don't have a coach, you will like maybe quit even faster because I know with dropshipping, a lot of people quit um, very fast, but with a coach, like you have someone to show your uh, progress or they also say like, when you're not doing something good, like they hold you accountable like he had already said so i think that just having a coach is really good to have someone to fall back on and to teach you things about um drop shipping or e-commerce in a whole as a whole um and it gives you perspective and it gives you yeah. like yeah like when you're not doing the numbers yet and your coach like tells you like if you keep doing keep doing it right you will get those numbers it's just something that that it gives you some extra, not security, but like, it just gives you perspective that it's possible. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, you got it. Yes, yeah, so, so it's, yeah, and, and yeah, I don't know about other coaches. Um, there's obviously a lot of coaches in this game, but we had a great coach. Um, and, um, and yeah, even for example, now we were we're launching our second store, and our coaching is done. It's been done actually. We're actually two weeks over, I think. And we asked him like, "Hey, can you please uh, can we do one more call so that you can just look over our uh, like after a week of testing on the new website to see if if there's anything you can like point out?" And he's like, "Okay, cool. Uh, I'll do that." And so he actually like he doesn't have to do that, like. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I just want to make a big shout out to, to Adam, like for just like also helping us out now that he even doesn't have to do that, you know? Um, yeah, that, uh, really um, what you guys have done and it's the same uh, feeling Adam has is just, uh, it's, it's just amazing. There's nothing that feels better than, uh, than helping people succeed. And yeah, you guys just like, uh, uh, you shared throughout this interview, you were on it, right? We gave the strategy, but still, we need people who do it. We need people who execute. 
and uh, to have then guys like you who do it, even when it's maybe not working at times, you still keep doing it. And then right now, you, to have those results, yeah, that's priceless. Uh, honestly, it, yeah, it's priceless. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. so also thank you to you. Like if if you wouldn't wouldn't have been flexing online the whole time, I wouldn't have seen you. <laughs> and, and now you will be flexing. Now you will be flexing. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Good shit. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah very good uh, interview. And uh, thanks for uh, making the time to, uh, to, uh, to redo it. Yeah, of course. And, uh, thank you.